Are you a member of the Chinese Communist Party? You may be banned from the US. The Trump administration is considering a visa ban that could affect millions of Chinese citizens. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The US and China are in Cold War II, and shots have been fired. Not actual shots since it's a Cold War, but the Trump administration is considering a huge new escalation, making this Cold War hotter or colder. I, I'm really not sure what the right language is. Anyway, roll clip. The Trump administration is weighing a possible travel ban on all members of the Chinese Communist Party and their families. If implemented, such a ban would go beyond upper echelons of the party. It would deny visas to tens of millions of Chinese citizens down to the party's rank and file. The source says U.S. officials are also considering whether to ban Communist Party members' children from attending American universities. Now this is huge, if true. The Communist Party elite have been sending their families and their money to the U.S. and other Western countries for years. In fact, Chinese leader Xi Jinping's daughter, Xi Mingzi, went to Harvard. Okay, she didn't go to Harvard at age six. There just aren't any confirmed photos of Xi Mingzi as an adult. She could look like this for all we know. Let's hope not, for her sake. According to the New York Times, the presidential proclamation that would ban Chinese Communist Party members and their families would cite the Immigration and Nationality Act. It gives the president power to temporarily block travel to the U.S. by foreign nationals who are deemed detrimental to the interests of the United States. It's the same statute President Trump used in 2017 to put a travel ban on several predominantly Muslim countries that were involved in terrorist activities, which became known as the Muslim ban. But this ban on Chinese Communist Party members isn't a done deal. It's based on a draft of a presidential proclamation, and that's only according to unnamed sources speaking to the New York Times and Reuters. In addition to Communist Party members and their families traveling from China, this proclamation could also authorize the United States government to revoke the visas of party members and their families who are already in the country, leading to their expulsion. The Chinese Communist Party has 92 million members, and those members have family who could also potentially be included in the ban. But being a Chinese Communist Party member is no casual thing. It's not the same as a political party in the U.S., like the Republicans or the Democrats, or one of the other ones. U.S. political parties have limited power, and their main goal is to get their candidates elected into government positions. But the Chinese Communist Party is the ruling party of a brutal dictatorship. It's originally a militant group based on Marxist-Leninist ideology, with a hefty dose of that Mao Zedong violence. The party and its military took over China in 1949, removing the previous government by force. Today. The Chinese Communist Party controls the entire Chinese government. It controls the Chinese military. It controls the court system. It controls education, from kindergarten to universities. It controls all major companies by requiring companies with 50 or more employees to have a Communist Party branch. The Communist Party also controls all media, not just state-run media, but also private media companies, which have to adhere to party censorship guidelines, which is also how the Communist Party controls the internet. The Communist Party may seem to allow religion, but it even controls those by setting up official organizations for each major religion and requiring them to put the party above God. Here's a portrait of Xi Jinping with communist slogans in a Catholic church. Here's a portrait of Mao Zedong in a Buddhist temple. In China, Chairman Mao didn't die for your sins, your family died for his. Anyway, the Chinese Communist Party has enormous power over not just the government, but every aspect of Chinese life. People typically join the party to enjoy the benefits of that power. Things like better jobs, more access for their companies, and so on. Most of China's elite became elite after joining the party. When people join the Communist Party, they have to swear an oath. 
That oath includes vowing to fight for communism throughout their lives, to be ready to sacrifice their all for the Communist Party, and to never betray the party. Yeah, it's a little different than just checking the box next to a political party on your voter registration form. So while the U.S.'s proposed travel restrictions would only target a fraction of the 1.4 billion Chinese people, in practice, a lot of the Chinese citizens who have the money and ability to travel or study in the U.S. are party members or their families. That's why the Chinese Communist Party is getting nervous. In our opinion, with regard to these comments from the U.S. side, we cannot verify whether they are true or not. You can follow up on this with the U.S. authorities on that one. But if they are true, I think it is quite pathetic. Hours later, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo stopped short of confirming the news, but said, quote, We're working our way through, under the president's guidance, about how to think about pushing back against the Chinese Communist Party. And the U.S. is now pushing back pretty hard against the Chinese Communist Party. Congress passed and Trump signed into law a bill that will impose sanctions on individuals for eroding Hong Kong's autonomy. The Trump administration put sanctions on Chinese officials involved in the persecution of Uyghur Muslims. And in May, the Trump administration expelled about 3,000 Chinese students from military universities studying in the U.S. But there are challenges to a ban on all Chinese Communist Party members and their families. Currently, the U.S. doesn't really track who is a member of the Chinese Communist Party. Although the presidential proclamation would apparently formalize a process by which American officials could inquire about party status during visa application interviews and on forms. By the way, whether you're a member of the Communist Party is already a question on the U.S. citizenship application. If the ban happens, the Chinese Communist Party will definitely retaliate. According to my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, the travel ban, once it starts, would probably be followed by reciprocal measures from China. But that might not be too hard-hitting. In June, the U.S. State Department issued a Level 4 travel advisory on China, Do Not Travel. That warning is in part because of the coronavirus, but it also cites arbitrary enforcement of local laws for purposes other than maintaining law and order, including the use of exit bans. Basically, the Chinese regime might hold American citizens hostage on exaggerated or trumped-up charges. That's what happened to two Canadian citizens. But either way, travel between China and the U.S. has been lopsided for a long time. Chinese citizens can come to the U.S buy land and assets, and in many cases, eventually become U.S. citizens. But not the other way around. But would a travel ban on Communist Party members fix the lopsidedness? And would it target the right people? There are 92 million party members, and most of them didn't join the party to persecute people. A lot of times, they just joined to get some personal benefits. For example, party membership can mean the difference between getting a bank loan or not. Even prominent Uyghur academic Ilham Toti is a Communist Party member. Would he be banned from coming to the U.S.? I mean, if he weren't currently serving a life sentence for separatism. But again, the potential ban on Chinese Communist Party members isn't necessarily going to happen. U.S. officials continue to debate a variety of formulations for banning Chinese travel to the United States, short of barring all party members such as targeting only the 25 members of the ruling Politburo and their families. That would be a much narrower ban that would affect the ruling communist elite, but not the average communist elite. Basically, what it comes down to is this. The Chinese Communist Party is a foreign power that is openly hostile to the United States. It always has been. What can the U.S. do about that? For years, the Chinese Communist Party has employed what are called short-of-war tactics. We've seen that in the South China Sea. Basically, the Chinese Communist Party has been able to gobble up the region piece by piece because it believed the U.S. wouldn't actually go to war to stop it. And over the years, the Chinese Communist Party has managed to slowly infiltrate institutions like the United Nations, steal billions of dollars worth of U.S. intellectual property, and also 
freely waged genocidal campaigns against Uyghurs, Tibetans, and Falun Gong practitioners. But now, the Chinese Communist Party is actually scared. You can tell by a statement made by Wang Yi, China's foreign minister. He said, Some say that China-US relations will not be able to return to its past. But that should not mean ignoring the history altogether and starting all over again, let alone impractical decoupling. In other words, he's saying, please, whatever you do, don't decouple the US economy from China, because that would lead to the downfall of the Chinese Communist Party. And Trump has said even that's on the table. So now might be a good time to quit the Chinese Communist Party. Would you like us to make an episode about how the Chinese Communist Party works? Let us know in the comments below. And now, it's time for me to reach into my big ol' hat and pick out a question from one of you. Today's question comes from Joseph Griffith. If Taiwan is incorporated into the CCP, and with Hong Kong already pretty much in the CCP's control, what country will the Communist Party target next? I do not believe the CCP will stop with Taiwan, but I don't know who else they could target. Wow, that's a dark question. First of all, if the Chinese Communist Party is able to conquer Taiwan, the rest of the world will have failed, particularly the United States. To allow one of Asia's best functioning democracies to fall to authoritarianism would be a disaster. But what country would be next? Well, it's hard to say because the Chinese Communist Party is already actively involved in subverting many other countries. For example, China has already exerted enormous influence in Southeast Asia, like in Cambodia, Vietnam, and Myanmar. I can imagine a dark future where the Communist Party claims all of Southeast Asia has been a part of China since ancient times. And of course, there's always Mars. It is the red planet, after all. So really, this is the theme of Cold War II. Freedom and democracy versus communism. Neither can live while the other survives. Which is why it's so vital that everyone watching helps get the word out. Cold War II is an information war. So watch China Uncensored and drop some truth bombs. To be clear, I'm only talking metaphorically here. Thanks for your question, Joseph. And thank you for watching. Join the fight by becoming part of what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help us keep making the show. And, as a bonus, I might answer your question at the end of an episode. There are some other cool perks as well. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to join. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching.